At this time, we have a special guest on the line. He is the head men's basketball coach of the Norfolk State University Spartans. Just finished up his fifth year at the helm, 87 and 82 overall, 58 and 22 in conference play. And here to talk about the team camp they've got going on this weekend and much more, we say good morning to Coach Robert Jones. Coach, thanks for joining us this morning. How's your summer going? Hey, how you doing? The summer is uh, busy, it's hectic, but uh, it's, it's it's nice. So. I hear you completely. Now, you guys got a, a fabulous team camp going on over there this weekend. In fact, I know games are going on right now. Tell the folks a little bit about it. Oh, this is our, um, probably our third uh, team camp. Um, we we had took a year off or two years off when they were redoing the facilities, but uh, so it's our third team camp, and um, we have eighteen teams this this uh, this camp this weekend. Uh, we got a couple teams from. Um, of course, the 757 area, 804, but then there's also Northern Virginia, um, Central Virginia, and we got two teams uh, from North Carolina and Maryland as well. So there's some good competition out there this weekend. And, you know, it allows us to see some of these guys up close and personal and allow the teams to also visit, uh, you know, the campus that we have here as well. Certainly, and uh, I think it's a little bit of a misconception about an issue with the recruits outside the local area because you guys did so well in New York and other parts of the country. But I look at your roster, and you got Keonze Chavis from Norfolk Collegiate, Mustadi Pitt of Hampton, Stephen Whitley uh, also goes by the nickname of Diesel from Booker T, and most recently you guys added Joe Bryant from the state champs of Lake Taylor. Have you sensed that misconception as well, and how important is it to keep some of the homegrown talent? Yes, that's a misconception. The biggest misconception. I mean, there was truth uh, to it that we had a lot of out of out of state players at at first, and the reason being is because um, you know myself being from New York and and back then also the uh, previous head coach was from New York as well, was that that was the easiest place for us to get to. You know that was that that was our our roots. You know, so it's just like um, you know we have a coach, Coach Clemens, who does a great a great job for us. Uh, you know, on staff, he's from Virginia, so you know it's easy for him to get Virginia players. So it was no slight. Or anyone else, it was just those were the easiest players to get. But as time went on, and we started to have some success with the, within the program, um, you know, we were able to get players from all over the country, honestly, and then of course more players from Virginia. I think when we got here, when we first got here as well, you know, a lot of players from Virginia, honestly, you know, didn't want to come to Norfolk State because it wasn't, you know, the best program for them to go to. But now with the level of success, and of course, you know, some some good runs in 2012, 2013, and now. Uh, sustaining that over the last few years, uh, homegrown talent is more keen and open to coming to Norfolk State, and that and it shows with the roster this year. We're chatting with Robert Jones. He's the head men's basketball coach of the Norfolk State University Spartans, getting ready for year number six at the helm with us here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. they got the team camp going on right now. You've got games in Joseph Eccles Arena as well as in the nearby Gillis Gymnasium, about a five-minute walk tops there. So go check out some of the great talent today and tomorrow if you haven't done so already. And, Coach, I think it's the first time we've had you on this program. So sort of fill the uh, listeners that aren't familiar with you a little bit about your background. You certainly joined the staff when Anthony Evans was there, and you guys made the NCAA tournament. But uh, tell the folks, uh, now you're the head man, of course, year six, uh, how you got into coaching and sort of your old journey to Norfolk State. I, I got, always say I got tricked into coaching. Uh, okay. One of my uh, assistant coaches at the university I went to, which is the State University of New York at New Paltz, um, he, he ended up getting a job at a nearby college called Bard College in Kingston, New York. And um, he asked me to come over and just help out a little bit because he was short-staffed and um, I was still in pretty good playing shape, so he wanted me to play against the guys and you know work out with the with the guys and and things like that. And that went from just doing that to now you know uh, well back then doing scouts and helping out with actual coaching, which led to me going back to my uh, alma mater and I was assistant coach there for two years. And um, then I went to St. Mary's High School in New York and I was the uh, freshman head coach um, and also assistant varsity coach when when Danny Green of uh, well now the Toronto Raptors played there. And um, then I became the head varsity coach once, once Coach Kloos, uh, who's the coach at Iona College now, once he, he left and took a, a college job, I became the head coach for two years. And then I came here as an assistant coach in 2007. I did six years as an assistant coach. And then once Coach Evans um, moved on to Florida International University, I was elevated to interim head coach my first year. And then um, I was able to win 19 games my first year and got nominated for one of the better co- coaches in the country, first-year coaches in the country, and then that led to a you know a longer-term deal, in which leads us to today. Yeah, I didn't know about the connections there with Tim Kloos and Danny Green, but pretty neat there. And, of course, you guys have maintained that high level of competitiveness with a 58-22 and 22 mark in the MEAC. I want to get your take, Coach, before we get back to your squad in this coming season on some of the NCAA rule changes 
uh, specifically with the alterations to the recruiting calendar. For folks not familiar, previously you guys would get three five-day recruiting periods in July. Now the coaches are allowed one weekend event in early July. Uh, Coaches also get to attend the new NCAA Youth Development Camps in late July, plus attend the NBA Players Association uh, camp that's held in uh, June in Charlottesville at UVA, as well as events the last couple of weeks of June approved by the National Federation of State High School Association. So uh, your take on it, good, bad, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I think that uh, it's still trial and error, and, you know, with the, with the new changes, uh, I think we have to go through a cycle to see how it directly affects us, um, you know, because just like a lot of other coaches across the country have said, those rules really uh, are positive uh, changes for the Power Five conferences. You know, the NBA uh, Top 100 camp, you know, that's a great camp, and, and it has many great players, but the truth of the matter, um, most of those players are high major players. You know, that, that doesn't affect – you know, me going there to just watch when I probably can't get one of those players from that, that camp. So, you know, once again, that, that, that helps the, the high majors. Um, you know, really taking away those uh, periods in July, uh, I think it's going to hurt us uh, on, a, on a mid-major level because, um, you know, you go out to Vegas or you go out to Orlando, you get a chance to see potentially, you know, 2,000 kids uh, in, the, in the setting. And um, out of those 2,000, you know, you're bound to like a few. And, and also for the kids, it's going to give them a chance that some kids that are under the radar that might not play for some of these high-powered uh, AAU teams or sneaker AAU teams, you get a chance to, you know, they get a chance to go out there and perform in front of hundreds of coaches and, um, you know, get a shot that they might not have uh, because they don't play for a high-powered AAU team. So that's going to hurt the kids uh, a lot, you know, as well as like the lower-level um, Division One coaches, and, you know, two and three as well, too. Um, but, uh you know, like I said, it's going to be a trial and error. I know the one negative impact is it is going to have on us and potentially a lot of other uh, smaller schools because uh, now that we're in a new fiscal year, um, everything was kind of budgeted, you know, out for recruiting. Now with us, you're now going to have to try to find uh, extra money to recruit in June and, and, and places like that that we we normally don't recruit in June um, when everything has already been budgeted. It, it's going to be tough, I think, for us. So, um you know, we, 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 it's going to be a trial and error, and I'll, I'll let you know, I guess, if we come back on the air uh, next year to figure out what's going on with that. Sure, and we hopefully like to get you on before that. But um, And that's something people don't realize, that perspective of the budget crunch with you guys, and all the high yeah. majors certainly get a lot of the limelight and the attention. But is there anything you'd like to see addressed or changed with it, be it in the, in the sport or the recruiting calendar and the situation that goes on with that? Well, I, I, I mean, I would like to see uh, – you know, July stay the way it is, honestly. Um, you know, I, I really don't understand the logic per se about taking it away. I know, you know, it was a, you know, of course, the big FBI investigation and, and, and things of that nature, which led to a lot of these changes. But, uh, you know, if we were speaking candidly, you know, a, a lot of those things have been going on for years. So it's like, you know, one, one crackdown, you know, changes the whole landscape of uh, recruiting. And I, I really truly think it's going to hurt some of these kids because, um, now they're saying that the high school elite prospects uh, are allowed to have agents and things like that. And, you know, now that's, a, that's up to a, an opinion of someone to say, okay, he's an elite prospect who might be a pro. You know, you look at kids like, uh, you know, your Damian Lillards of the world who didn't play for a high major school, your Steph Curry's of the world who, who you know, weren't, um, you know, these high major prospects. You know, are they not going to be now allowed to have an agent as well? You know, and even, I mean, a kid like I was, you know, Kyle O'Quinn, who you know who was you know one offer, and now he's going into his sixth year in the NBA. Um, you know, it's gonna it's gonna slight those kids. So uh, some of the changes are just interesting, and and I'm I'm really trying to figure out. And I know, and I know as time goes on, um, I'm sure they'll release um, the, the the true logic behind some of these changes. But um, you know, it's still baffling some of these changes. And and one of the biggest changes that they didn't do that was on on the table was to allow. Uh, your non-coaching personnel to work out your players while you're on the road. And I think that just talking to a lot of coaches across the country, that was one of the biggest changes that we were hoping that was going to get passed through because now with, with four coaches on the road, at least your, your director of ops, if he's uh, capable of, of, of working out a player or your video guy, if he's capable to work out a player, you know, they could get in there and, and, and handle some workouts and things like that while you're on the road. But now uh, they, they, you know, they shot that one down out of all the stuff that they, that they did pass.
Well, very true. A few more minutes with Robert Jones. He's the head men's basketball coach at Norfolk State University. Our guest here on High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. They've got their team camp this weekend. Just a bunch of teams involved from Salem to Kickatan, LC Bird, Lake Taylor, Kempsville, Western Branch, Jamestown, you name it. So many more here on ESPN Radio 94.1. And, Coach, I want to uh, get your thought, too. You mentioned Kylo Quinn. I see he comes back all the time. He's had some camps in the area, helped out with other events. And that Missouri game back in 2012 when you guys were a number 15 seed in stunned Missouri in the tournament, I know, always gets brought up. How much does he get brought up to you still to this day when you're on the road recruiting and things of that nature? Uh, it still gets uh, brought up, you know, from time to time. Um, you know, it's, it's almost like it was a gift and a curse because – that was our first time in school history, and now, I mean, currently our only time in school history, um, making the tournament. But then, like, on your first time, you pull off the biggest upset, uh, you know, in, in, in NCAA history. So it's like now uh, everybody is expecting you to, to, to go back and do that every single year. And when you don't do it, it's almost like fans are disappointed. When, and, and, it's you know, it doesn't quite work like that, especially in a one-bit league, which, you know, 75%, 80% of the country uh, is, you know, just a one-bit league. So, um like I said, it's a gift and a curse. It's definitely a gift more than a curse because it brought awareness to our university. It brought awareness to our program. Um, before recruiting, when I would go into a house, uh, I would have to say, hey, I'm, you know, we're from Norfolk State University. Uh, we're close to Virginia Beach. We're, uh, you know, we're not too far from, you know, wherever, wherever. But now when you go into someone's house, they know exactly, you know, where you're located, and they've, and they've heard of you before. So um, it, definitely, it definitely helps uh, in, in that regard as far as recruiting and things like that. And a final one, we thank you for your time this morning. Uh, this year's squad and the non-conference uh, portion of your schedule, what's that looking like? And also give me a take on the outlook on the MEAC this year. Um, I mean, I like my squad. Um, I, I, you know, I think that we have some good uh, carryover from last year. Um, we have, so we have some good continuity with some key players, um, you know, which, which always helps. I think sometimes you, know, you have carryover, whether, whether seven or eight guys returning, but then your three best players might, have, you know, might not be with you. But this year – um, you know, we got our leading scorer, like you said, Stephen, Stephen Whitley from last year. He's back. We got a couple guys who average eight and a half points each with, um, with uh, you know, uh, Nick Thomas and Mastadi uh, Pitt. You know, those guys are back. But then we also uh, add, um, you know, a kid who was sitting out, C.J. Kelly, uh, 6'5 freshman guard, which we were really uh, excited about. Uh, he sat out last year due to um, uh, NCAA stuff. Um, and you know he was the leading scorer in New York City at 28 points a game, and we, we you know we beat out some other schools for him, and he's been looking really good in workouts. And um, you know we also returned uh, Jordan Butler back, who uh, should be in the mix for Defensive Player of the Year in the conference. Um, you know he sat out last year due to a couple of different things, injuries, and a few other things, but he's he's uh, he's back. So um, you know we're, we're we're excited about this year's uh, team. Also added uh, another kid from the area, Armani Branch, who. Uh, Went to VMI. He averaged eight points at VMI. Didn't have a lot of team success, but had some, you know, individual success. He averaged eleven, and um, and you know, in conference. So we think that some of those things could, tra- you know, translate over to to us and, and the MEAC and things like that. So um, we're we're, we're excited about uh, this year's group. Well, coach, then, uh, you said the conference. You, what, yeah, you the conference. What do you take on the MEAC this year? I think the MEAC this year, um, you know, it's an unknown factor. Um, you know, some guys transferred out, uh, you know, new guys transferred in. So it's always going to be a, a, a kind of tough to gauge right now. But I do think that, um, you know, it, the teams at the top are going to be very, very good. And, and not just very good in conference, but I think you're going to see the, these teams get some uh, out-of-conference wins too. And, um, you know, like Bethune-Cookman, which played, you know, was with very good last year. They returned um, a lot of their players, and they added a few um, NC Central, although they might have been a six seed that you know won the championship last year, they do return that whole team almost. So uh, they're going to have a little championship pedigree, championship swag coming into the season. So they should be a tough out. Um, you know, I think that we'll be right there again uh, this year, and I think one of the sleepers will be uh, Maryland Eastern Shore. They got a pretty good recruiting class. Uh, it's a new coach there this year. Um, I know he's on an interim basis, but he got some pretty good talent uh, coming in. So we'll see what uh, happens with that. And then, you know, of course, other teams, you know. Coppin State, they they got some new talent. Uh, um, FAMU got some new talent. So it's, it's going to be a, a battle, you know, just like it is pretty much every year. And, um, you know, with, with our schedule, our non-conference schedule is going to be uh, brutal as always, which is not always a good thing. But, um, you know, with a level of success, a lot of times now teams won't play you. So you have to play teams that you necessarily might not want to play. Uh, but, you know, hey, it, it gives our guys some character and, um, you know, of course, if you're able to get a win, it's a signature win for the season. But we opened the season with the uh, University of Michigan, 
uh, which of course was a you know Final Four participant. Uh, we also played Loyola later on in the season in December, which is another Final Four participant last year. Um, we have uh, Stony Brook University coming here. We play Siena College. We play Ryder College, which won their conference last year. Um, we went to the NIT. Um, we also uh, go play Kent State out there. And then we have um, University of South Carolina, which, you know, Frank Martin's teams are always going to be tough out. So we go down there and play. And then we also play in a Sun Bowl Classic again this year uh, with uh, UTEP, Wyoming, and East Tennessee State. So, uh, you know, any of those four opponents in that two-game, two-day stretch is going to be a, a tough out. So we're going to have we're going to be challenged early and often, and um, we look forward to the challenge. Yeah, certainly some good battles there. You mentioned Frank Martin, SEC in South Carolina, and B-Line at Michigan. So certainly it'll get you guys ready for conference play. Coach, it was great to talk to you. Definitely do it again here on the program. And we have my cohort, Coach Young, back. And I look forward to seeing you guys later this weekend at the team camp. Thanks so much. All right. Talk to you soon. You got it. That is Robert Jones, head men's basketball coach at Norfolk State University with us here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com.